this is now, the U.S. is now suffering its worst drought in more than 50 years. It covers more than half of our country. Counties in 26 states have declared disaster areas. Look at all those red spots on that uh, screen there. Crops are drying out, lake beds drying up, and ranchers are selling off herds of cattle as hay fields wither. It is all sure to mean higher grocery prices ahead. Joining me now, Heidi Cullen is chief climatologist for uh, Climate Central. She's also the author, by the way, of the book, The Weather of the Future. It makes me afraid to ask uh, because it seems, of course, Heidi, that every year people ask, is this the direction? Look at what's happening here, these extremes, and now this heat this season. Yeah, and you know, what's so interesting is that farmers were incredibly hopeful back in March. I mean, yes. this is, the summer is a story of moving from heaven to hell. Farmers planted more corn than they ever had since the 1930s. Commodities were high. March was mild. They planted early. The USDA forecast a bumper crop, 15 billion acres, 15 billion bushels of corn, and then basically by the time mid-May arrived, we just saw this really sharp transition. Scientists are calling it kind of a flash drought. Was there no weather trend that indicated that we would be in this situation? We had a La Nina in place that's definitely generally indicative of a drought. We also saw snowpack melt back really early, hence the Colorado wildfires that we saw. So conditions were in place, but like I said, the farmers were really hopeful back in the spring. But by the time June and July rolled around, like you said, a thousand counties in 26 states and 55% of the lower the lower 48 in a moderate to extreme drought. So your book is titled The Weather of the Future. I imagine people come to you all the time and say, what does that mean? What is the future here? What is the answer? You know, here in the U.S., it definitely means more extremes. And we're talking heat extremes, drought extremes, and wildfire extremes. So in a sense, the summer of 2012 is, is a really nice, if you will, picture of what we can expect more of. Yeah, obviously, you know there are people who still are not convinced the science of of climate change, even people who run for office who want to lead this country. Uh, with that said, when you see these extremes, what is the most effective um, argument other than science to show what's happening here, why we have the situation we're in? Well, first of all, I just think it's so terrific to be able to give the broader climate context to these extreme weather events, because we've really compartmentalized the weather. We just talk about this extreme, that extreme, without saying, look, it's part of this bigger pattern. So that really helps folks connect the dots on this issue, because most Americans still think of global warming or climate change as affecting polar bears in the Arctic and right. not affecting us here in our own country. Absolutely. And, you know, we we were just talking, for example, about the weather in London. You know, all eyes will be on the Olympics. They are also they are experiencing extreme weather, one of the wet wettest, coolest summers that they've seen. Yeah, very different from here in the East. Very, very different. All right, well, we'll see what happens. Of course, certainly our thoughts are with those farmers and their families, but we also know in the end, people who are struggling as it is in this economy may be shelling out more for yeah. their food. Yeah, this is not good news. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure having you on. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg.